Welcome to this video series on computer networks and based around the, uh, the textbook Computer Networks, a Systems Approach. Uh, we're creating these videos for those of you who are studying at Flinders University uh, in whatever form, whether that's uh, on site or whether it's uh, you know, studying from home uh, in Australia or whether you're studying abroad. But also actually we want to make this resource available to, uh, to anyone really who is uh, who's studying computer networks. Uh, and with you know, based on this excellent open source textbook uh, and the slides that are already available, uh, we hope to complement that with these lectures. So on that, uh, my approach isn't going to be to cover exactly what's written in the textbooks. I'm going to give my insight and my perspective on the slide. So hopefully that will complement what's in the textbook and give you a little bit different perspective so that if something you're reading in the textbook doesn't quite make sense, you might get a different perspective here uh, in these videos and that that can helpfully, uh, hopefully help you uh, in your learning. So a little bit about uh, myself. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Paul Gardner-Stephen from the Flinders University. Uh, I lead the telecommunications research laboratory there. And my focus really is on uh, disaster area communications and communications in very difficult areas. So that uh, might, for example, be small Pacific island nations with islands separated by many hundreds of kilometers and no uh, substantial local telecommunications infrastructure on those islands. And of course, they want to communicate with one another. They want to have early warning of cyclones, of tsunamis. Uh, and you know they and their government may want to be able to effectively monitor their health situation. And COVID-19 has kind of shown us uh, that you know the ability to uh, monitor public health uh, in places is helpful. So these are all uses of computer networks. Uh, and so as we go through this textbook, uh, we will look at how we can construct networks, how we operate networks, what the architecture of a network uh, might be, and why it's important uh, to think about these things. So yeah, so that's going to be my general approach. The aim will be there'll be lots of short videos covering only you know one or a handful of slides each to make it a little bit easier for yourselves to uh, to hunt through and find the material that you're looking for. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully if people have questions as we go through, uh, certainly this year as I'm delivering the material. Uh, I'll be aiming to respond to uh, to questions that people raise and to put uh, additional videos up uh, that address some of those things. So uh, that's the preliminaries hopefully out the way and uh, let's now dive into the material. Okay, I'll just get my, right. Okay, so uh, chapter one is where we, we're starting at obviously and this is the foundation part uh, of the computer network. So there's a, a number of problems that you have to solve if you actually want to create an effective computer network. Uh, and one of the, the key differences actually with modern computer networks compared to the very early networks is that they are general purpose. They can be used for a great many things. If you think about the way that you use the internet uh, on your phone, uh, the way you use the internet uh, with computers, uh, you know, I'm recording this and I'll upload the videos when I'm done uh, you know, via a streaming service of some sort, uh, and I'll check my email, and you know, there's might do a hundred other things, uh, all with this same internet network. Uh, and so, this generality is a, a really big advantage and feature of computer networks today. And if we can compare that to you know the telephone network of the 20th century, that really could only make phone calls. Uh, and in the end, people kind of worked out a way to, to jerry rig uh, slow data on the top, but really it was about phone calls. Uh, and in the early days of computers, the network might correspond to you know the the serial communications links between the uh, the different computers on that network. So yeah, there's been this substantial change uh, in uh, you know from uh, application specific networks to now these very general networks uh, that have really actually then as a result overtaken and replaced to a very large extent these earlier networks behind us, and even now with uh, fourth and fifth generation uh, mobile phone networks. The earlier generations had dedicated voice and data circuits. Now that's all combined as of uh, the 4G system. And so we now do voice over uh, IP on the uh, the newer network. So again, we, we're seeing this convergence all around the place. And so then <laughs> what really is a computer network? And we'll talk a little bit more about these things as we go through the uh, the chapter. But at the end of the day, a computer network is some mechanism whereby multiple computers can be connected together by some means. And so the internet is uh, you know, obviously one 
a very common form of that now. But even with that, there are different ways you can connect those computers together. You might have a wireless connection with Wi-Fi. Uh, you might have a, a fixed Ethernet connection, or you might have some other kind of uh, more exotic connection, uh, particularly on older computers. Uh, but it's really the way that these things can be connected and then the way that they can interoperate uh, that connection between them uh, to useful ends. And we've already talked a little bit about computer networks being different to some of the other networks that were much more specific in their purposes. Uh, and we'll cover that uh, in more detail. And we'll also talk about what a computer network architecture is. So, you know, what are, what's the, the grand design, the blueprints of how a computer network uh, is to function? And there can be a lot of factors, just like with the, the architecture of a house uh, or of a, a new office building. There are a lot of design choices that need to be made. Uh, and once they're made, they have a, a very real impact on the way that the, uh, you know, the resulting uh, artifact is used and can be used, in fact. So these are the, the four problems that we're going to, uh, to look at in this chapter. Uh, the chapter itself, uh, we'll start by having a look at applications. So what are the things that we can do with a network? And then what, from those applications, what are the requirements going to be for the network? Uh, and then you know, move on to this ar network architecture piece that we've spoken about. And then you know, what's involved in implementing networking software or software that can use network services. And then you know, how might we measure uh, the performance of a network and what are some of the things that might impact on the performance uh, of a network. So the goal then for the chapter really is to explore you know what are the the requirements for us to actually make a useful network and to make applications that can run uh, on a computer network and you know what can that enable uh, in terms of communities and what requirements might those communities then experience as they try and use the network uh, again we've said about this idea of network architecture and this really is a key piece and it will come up uh, repeatedly as we go through the chapter uh, and then the, you know, the, we want to just introduce some of the key concepts of actually writing networking software. Uh, we're not going to go into great depth in this chapter, but we do want to introduce this kind of, uh, you know, the network programming because these patterns you will see repeatedly uh, as you go about creating network software, perhaps in your careers in the future. Uh, and finally, you know, we want to think about what are the key metrics that actually matter for measuring network performance. Uh, what do we mean by network speed, for example? Uh, we need to get into this in a little bit more detail to actually have a, uh, a more meaningful understanding. So that's our, our goal for the chapter. And uh, that's it for this video. Again, we're gonna try and keep these all really short uh, and so that each one you, know, you, can, you can hunt through easily. So again, uh, provide comments uh, you know, to this video below and we'll try and respond to those and uh, you know, record additional videos that cover any questions that you might have. But in any case, I uh, wish you the very best as we go through this book together uh, and that you can learn a lot about computer networks that will help you uh, and, and be interesting as you go through as well. So thank you.